So another method of sending data over the network is to use RPC calls. Now RPC calls um, can be used to send data to the server, which is one of their main uses. Um, so let's define an RPC call, um, and this will simply change one of the network attributes on the server. So let's say, let's have an attribute called name, change name. If, sorry, a method called change change name, and it has the name argument that we're going to set it to. And this is how we convert a normal function into an RPC call. Self dot my name equals name. And that's how we change our name. However, we need to define this as an RPC call that will run over the network. So what we do is we first we need to add an annotation. So between the end bracket and the colon, we add a hyphen and then a more than symbol. Uh, and we type network dot roles. Sorry. Um, network dot network dot net modes dot server, meaning this will get run on the server. And we also need to tell it what type of argument name is. So we add a colon, a space for good convention, and then type static, sorry, network dot static value. We're going to make an instance of that, and we're going to have a string type. So we're going to type str. What this means is we've created a name argument, which is the string type which is wrapped in a static value container and it points to the server, meaning it's sent to the server. Now all we need to do is simply execute this and it will run on the server. Now one other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is network roles. Um, RPC calls are very in easy to create. Um, another functionality, functionality that is provided by the replicable base class is the ability to prevent certain clients from running certain functions based on how important they are to the network game. All replicable instances have something called a network role. It's a network attribute with two two different arguments, or two different attributes rather. Uh, it's a local role and a remote role, and it's wrapped inside of a role container. Now the local role is referring to the, ro the local role on the server and the remote role on other clients, um, although clients will have those variables switched to see the correct versions for their machine. Um, but you define it in terms of the server. So by default we have roles, two roles, uh, here we can see in the base class. Uh, we have authority and then none. That means the local role on the server is the authority and the remote role is a none, meaning that clients are not sent this network object by default. So we're going to want to create this ourselves. So we want other clients to see this network printer. So let's define roles equals network and so I'm going to type this all out. Now to find a local role being the authority, meaning on the server this is the authority, which, which is what most nearly all network objects will use. Uh, and then we need to define a remote role. There are two different types of remote roles uh, that you're really worried about. There's three or four in total, but there's only two you need to worry about really. That's remote role is author author autonomous proxy and remote role is simulated proxy. Um, or or remote or roles.autonomous or roles.simulated proxy uh, is their actual attribute names. Uh, autonomous proxies are basically a special type of simulated proxy. What that means is unless you own um, the network object on the client, um, you're set to your local role as simulated proxy. But if you do own the network object on the client, um, your local role becomes role or th autonomous proxy. So basically it's, like a, it's a special type of simulated proxy that only changes for the owning client. Um, so in other words, the client's player, their player object on their client machine will have a, a local role of autonomous proxy, but other clients will see them as a simulated proxy. Uh, it mainly influences how the physics is run and also how um, what functions they can run. Because we're not using the BG network library here, we won't worry about physics. So let's define our remote role as network dot roles dot simulated proxy for now and make sure that roles is uppercase or rather cap. Now this means that when we send this to the um, client uh, they won't be able to run any function that isn't defined in the base class replicable and one of those functions is change name meaning they can't actually run the change name function to change their name on the server which is most of the time what you'll want. You only want the client who owns the object to be able to change their name. Um, However, there is a little more to it than that in terms of RPC calls. Um, 
So before we quickly look at um, roles, let's just take a little note about RPC calls. RPC calls can only be run uh, from between network object instances that own the network object. So basically, when you have a, a network object on the client, it creates one on the server as well, um, or rather the other way around. Um, so they are both the owning instances of that network object. Other clients also get copies, but they don't own those network objects. This means that RPC calls can only be run by the clients which have network objects that they own. So if a server creates an AI, none of the clients can actually run an RPC call on it because they don't actually own it. Um, whereas if the client has a local player that's also created on the, on the server and the client, they can run RPC calls between them themselves, but other clients won't get that RPC call. So it's a one-way mapping. Uh, and if you're unsure about that, I'll explain later on uh, in another video. Um, but essentially, this change name code can only be run by the client who this represents on their machine or on the server. But it points to the server, so it's only useful to be run on their client. And they, again, can only run this if they have a, a, a local role on their client, which is uh, either a, a simulated proxy and the function is marked simulated, or if they're an autonomous proxy or an authority. Now, most of the time, if you're running RPC calls, that object should be an autonomous proxy on the local client machine. But for the example here, we're going to set it as a simulated proxy on all clients. So in order to be able to run this, we need to define a decorator, which is network.simulated. And this means that this uh, code can be run on this client. So now this, this network object should work over the network. And that finishes our video for today.